This is the program that took place on 27th of February 2004. This is a very funny program. Very funny. Where there is no dialogue, no speaking, there will be only gestures and postures. Something, they go on acting. Watching those signs, gestures, we should be able to make out what they want to convey. The exact theme. Perhaps the first time such a thing has taken place to the gaze of a wide, big gathering. Usually such things are done in a small gathering. But right in front of Swami before so many people they did that. Where it's just a silent uh, action. And students enact it in front of Swami and later after the enactment they will ask, they'll put a question, who will tell the message of this? And students would raise their hands and uh, one of them will be picked up and they should tell the message of the whole thing enacted, which is totally speechless. Am I clear? Now, <coughs> this is quite interesting. Swami also keenly watched every episode. A uh, few boys were uh, walking and uh, one boy acted as if he is garlanded another boy and uh, the other boy was quite short he was trying to garland the taller boy he could not do it because he was relatively short in the meantime one boy from the front came fell at the feet of the tall fellow and this tall boy lifted this young fellow watching this the short boy immediately garlanded the first person who was tall. This was enacted. And the question was put, who will tell the message of this? And uh, naturally, few have raised their hands and one boy was asked to give the answer. The boy said like this, this is an episode from Ramayana, the holy wedding of Rama and Sita. Rama, as we know, is quite tall in his height. Well, Sita is relatively short. In wedding, bridegroom garlands the bride, bride garlands the bridegroom. That is the convention. Rama being quite tall could easily garland Sita, who is short. But Sita could not garland Rama because he is very tall. And she can't ask him, come on, bend down, I will garland you. Rama will not bend his head before anybody. It is very embarrassing situation. Watching this Lakshmana came from a distance, fell at the feet of brother to do his father namaskar. And immediately Rama bent down, caught hold of both of his shoulders and lifted him. Watching the situation, immediately Sita garlanded Rama. Because Rama would not bend down otherwise. Rama bent only to lift Lakshmana. So this is quite convenient period and Sita garlanded. So this is an episode to say that Sita is very intelligent and this relates to the holy wedding of Rama and Sita. Everybody clapped and enjoyed that. Then second episode. One boy sat there as if he was doing some penance. And few boys started walking close. And this boy who sat immediately opened his eyes in a bit of anger. It's all gestures, postures, actions. In the meantime, another boy came slowly and fell at the feet of all the five fellows. And this man who sat doing some penance, who was angry, got up and he too did Padra Namaskar to all these five boys. That is the enactment. Yes, who will tell the message of this? 
Yes, boys raised their hands. One boy was asked to give the answer. The boy said, This is a story from Mahabharat. The Panchapandavas were trying to lift a fruit from a forest where a saint was in deep penance. The name of the saint is Roma Rushi. Roma means hair. He said it is so long, it is spread to a few kilometers, like a black carpet. The five Pandavas coming that way did not notice the hair. And they saw a very big fruit which they wanted to pick up and partake. But this saint was doing penance for that fruit only. Because whosoever that eats this fruit will not feel thirsty, will not have appetite. Therefore that Rishi saint was doing penance for the procurement of this fruit. The five Pandavas came there easily to grab this fruit. And Rishi, the saint was disturbed. He opened his eyes and he was very angry, ready to curse all the five Pandavas. In the meantime, Krishna came to the rescue of five Pandavas. He came to the sage and spoke few words, few courtesies, kind enquiries. Then Krishna fell at the feet of all five Pandavas. Then Rushi thought the five Pandavas must have been very great people. So he too fell in the, at their feet. Thus his anger is pacified. This is an episode which shows the kindness of God towards devotees that he would, he would not mind even to fall at the feet of the devotees. Everybody clapped. That is the second episode. And then the third episode, a wooden plank as big, bigger than this, one boy sat there doing some penance. And uh, there is another boy just watching him mischievously from a distance. In the meantime, few fellows came and they were asking something this sage, some information. This sage was very furious, angry, he said, he was pointing downwards. This is the enactment. Question. Who will tell the message of this episode? Yes. All raised hands. One boy started narrating. Pandavas were in, were in great difficulty at one time. Krishna wanted to save them on that particular day. He approached the sage by name Durvasa who is known for his anger and fury. And Krishna told Durvasa, O sage, protect these five fellows for today. I want you to help them. And Durvasa said, Krishna, I will protect them. But on one condition, I will not utter a lie. I will speak truth only. On that condition, I will give them protection. Krishna said, it's all right. I never want you to speak lies, no. Give protection to these five boys. Okay. What this saint did was, he dug a big pit, made the five fellows sit in that pit, and he kept a wooden plank on that, sat there doing penance. In the meantime, Kauravas, their enemies, were in search of these five Pandavas. They were passing by that place and asked the sage, O oh, sage Durvasa, where are five Pandavas? He was very angry. They are here, he said, they are here. Then the Kaur was very much afraid of the saint. Oh, he will curse us. They ran away from there. Durvasa did not utter a lie. They are there only. But he changed his tone. They are here. Then they thought, you see, he is going to curse us, so they ran away. So without having to tell it a lie, Durvasa could save the lives of 
five pandavas tactfully that is the episode depicted enacted by children that uh, evening then next episode few boys started walking like that and uh, few boys started walking in front of them one fellow brought a bundle bundle cloth wrapped up bundle cloth bag and uh, he opened the bundle and uh, in the other group one boy took up that bundle and handed over to another boy the another boy saw all the things there in that bundle and started speaking to the other boy some gestures some actions question what is all about this what is all about who will give the answer one boy said i will give the answer what is this this is an episode from ramayana when sita was abducted rama lakshmana were in search of sita at that moment one fellow sugriva came with a bundle of jewels and gave to rama do they belong to your wife sita rama never knew the jewels of sita like the modern man who will know the wife's property and our dowry she is not like that this is also joke of swami it's not mine like the modern fellow he is not bothered about the wife's property so he gave the, the ornaments to his brother lakshmana brother you find out whether they belong to sita and lakshmana says brother i do not know the ear rings of sita because i never looked at them i do not know the chain of sita i never looked at it i never looked at the gold band waist band of sita because i never looked at it but i know the anklets of sita why every morning i take her pada namaskar so i can identify the anklets therefore these ornaments belong to sita only this is the episode enacted this episode speaks of the character of lakshmana though he lived in the company of sita for a long time taking care of brother rama and sister in law sita he never cared to know her jewels and all that he faithfully served them it speaks of the his excellence his exemplary character this was the episode enacted everybody clapped on hearing this including swami and then this is another episode one boy came in the front started moving his fingers like that and then started showing his fingers like that acting like a monkey and started telling what does it mean what does it mean then came the answer small thing that he was showing with the little fingers meant body is a water bubble and the pointing finger he which he was showing to the head is the mind and acting like a monkey meaning mind is a mad monkey and directing the body and telling no means don't follow the body pointing out towards the head saying no means don't follow the mind pointing to his self meaning follow the conscience so body is a water bubble don't follow the body mind is a mad monkey don't follow the mind follow your conscience that message was conveyed by the gestures of that boy everybody liked it and then the next one boy stood there and started explaining he with his pointing finger he was circling it round his head and then he was pointing out his hands he also pointed his stomach and also he was pointing out his feet 
once again the head the shoulders stomach and the feet he was pointing out that is simple actions question what is all all about one boy got up and said this is the message of veda mantra there are four castes in hindus brahmana kshatriya vaishya sudra brahmins represent the face kshatriya represent the shoulders vaishya represents the stomach sudra represents the feet so this is the cosmic personality of god where all four castes are equal no one is superior to anybody so the brahman representing the head meaning dissemination of knowledge kshatriya is representing shoulders meaning protection force army vaishya representing stomach meaning business commerce sutra is representing feet meaning agriculture so it is a classification based on the vocation profession temperament attitudes not to divide and rule but unfortunately it took a political turn and divided the society into caste which have been fighting with each other but originally gita veda says this purely attitude oriented profession oriented temper temperament oriented nothing to do with the birth that's what original gita says this interpretation was said by one of the boys which was very much like and then another boy came and he joined his thumb and the four finger like that making a circle with another hand he was showing as if he was opening as he was open turning the key like that that was the action yes what is the significance one student got up and said this the four finger and the thumb encircled is nothing but a lock the other which he was opening is the key so lock is the body key is the mind if you turn one side it is locked world side bondage if you turn towards the other side god side it is liberation same lock same key there is a difference only in the turning difference if you turn world side bondage if you turn god side liberation that's what it is everybody like it and then there is also another episode where a man a boy looking like a saint was walking in the front and another fellow lean and shivering very weak happened to touch this saint this man was angry and he said get out from here and that fellow who was shivering immediately said pointing out pointing out the body pointing out the chest pointing out the body point which he was repeatedly doing immediately the saintly man fell at the feet of this fellow who was shivering what is the message of this you all know this i why boys you also are fully aware of all these facts one student raised his hand and started giving answer it is an episode from the life of shankaracharya shankaracharya had a bath in the morning and he was proceeding one untouchable a man of lower caste happened to touch shankaracharya he was very angry i had a bath now you are untouchable why do you touch me and then that untouchable started speaking oh sage whom have i touched why are you ang- angry with me i touched your body after all and you are not the body your body and my body are very much same that body 
and this body are temporary they are soon to perish they are soon to vanish one day why do you bother about this body have i touched your self if i touched your self the real self in you is as much the same as the self in me then what is the mistake then adi shankara could know that yama dharma raja the god of death came here to teach him a lesson in the form of an untouchable therefore he fell at his feet and got the message this is the episode that day the final episode enacted is this there are two boys one boy was walking in the front behind another boy following walking in the same direction behind the first boy one two the boy started acting as if he is like a demon fighting with a demon number 3 the boy started acting as if he is playing finally the boy sat relaxed laughing what does he, what is the message all raised hands but one boy was asked to give the answer one boy walking in the front another boy following him faithfully is the message of bhagavan which goes like this follow the master then second the boy fighting acting like a demon conveys the second message face the devil the third the boy acting playing like that in no means fight to the end and fourth the boy being sitting relaxing means finish the game so follow the master face the devil fight to the end finish the game the four messages of baba have been depicted by enactment which students could reply this is for the first time such a thing had taken place and we were extremely happy to watch this this what they call dumb sharats dumb sharats d u m b s h a r o d s dumb sharats where they remain dumb speechless only gestures and postures by which the audience should be able to make out the episode enacted everybody enjoyed including bhagwan sri sachin sai baba well this is an episode which took place on the 1st of march 2004 this appears to be more or less a literary program full of songs and poems composed by bhagwan you should see swami how he was watching them even god also has got his is on emotions and feelings when all the poems that he composed 50 years ago they are repeated in front of him by boys naturally one would be happy god in a human form must be happy you know natural therefore he was feeling happy in watching every word they were telling what happened this is uh, what it is it, it seems to be an open court i tell you these are all without makeup just white pen white shirt that's all just a, a drama like thing without makeup a boy sat on the chair like that and uh, we understand that he is uh, indra indra the head of gods and another boy came who i understand he is narada and he came to indra the head of gods he said oh lord the whole heaven is panicky now he is under confusion indra asked narada what happened swami what should i tell you 
नंबर वन ब्रह्मा हैज लोटस यू नो दी सीट्स ऑन द लोटस ऑल लोटस फ्लावर्स वैनिस्ड दे आर नो लोटस फ्लावर्स सो ब्रह्मा इज रोमिंग अबाउट ऑन द स्ट्रीट इज वेरी मच वरी एंड आउटर इफ एनी फाइव एलिमेंट्स टू एलिमेंट्स आर मिसिंग देर इज नो फायर देर आर नो क्लाउड्स द रेन गार्ड इज मिसिंग द फायर गार्ड इज मिसिंग एवरीथिंग सीम्स टू बी पैनिक एंड नारदा सेड ओ इंद्रा वाट मोर कैन आई टेल यू लॉर्ड शिवा डिसअपियर्ड वॉट इज टू बी डन एवरीथिंग इज इन ए स्टेट ऑफ कंफ्यूजन दट माउंटेन मेरू मेरू एम ई आर यू माउंटेन ऑफ गोल्ड माउंटेन ऑफ वेल्थ ऑल्सो डिसअपियर्ड स्वामी वी आर ऑल कंफ्यूज वी डोंट नो वॉट टू डू वॉट शल वी डू देन इंदिरा थॉट दट ही टू मे वैनिश सम डे देन ब्रह्मा लास्ट इज लोटस फ्लावर्स देन क्लाउड्स आर गॉन देन शिवा डिसअपियर्ड when fire is i'm missing when meru mountain is gone well this fellow indra also may go some day then he was very much afraid of it what to do what to do then narada said oh indra don't worry let both of us go to sri maha vishnu vishnu and pray to him to give us some solution give the address of those these people who are missing last and found articles so we will be able to find them recover them so both of them went to vishnu and prayed to him oh lord this what had happened please tell us then vishnu started replying look here you said shiva is missing here no 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 he has taken the form of bhagwan sri satsai baba on earth in puttaparthi he shifted his address that's all He has not totally disappeared. He is there in Puttaparthi. Don't worry. You said that Brahma lost his lotus flowers. Tell him, tell that fellow. Let him not worry, because lotus flowers chose to be the eyes of Bhagwan Sri Satsai Baba. Let him not worry. You say that Meru Mountain is missing. Don't worry. The Meru Mountain chose to be very small in size. Prefer to be. a mole on the cheek of satsai baba let him not worry you said that fire is missing don't worry the fire lost all its burning capacity it prefer to be red robe of bhagwan the fire is red in color red robe of bhagwan is fire god let him not worry about it you are very much worried about the clouds are missing don't worry the clouds are represent his halo of hair on his head therefore lord shiva is bhagwan satsai baba lotus flowers are his eyes clouds are his hair fire is his angi the dress that he puts on lotus flowers are his eyes don't worry no one missed everyone shifted to the planet earth there in puttaparthi everybody liked it very much and this is the program 27th february 2004 in uh, a court of pundits it is a special uh, program in pundits uh, a court of pundits they mention few words and picking up these few words a scholar should make a poem out of it they mention four words or three words using these three words you should compose a poem it is a literary gimmick it is a literary exercise it speaks of the literary excellence of the scholar which is practiced today in india so it's a literary program so one scholar said today is the assembly of great scholars i give these words any one of you can 
compose a poem. Ah, sir, tell us those words. The first word, compa, K O M P A. Compa means residence. Second, kampa, K A M P A. Kampa means thorny bushes. Four, gampa. Gampa means a basket. Four, dumpa, D U M P A. Means a tuber, potato tuber. Making these four words, can anybody compose a poem? I repeat, kampa, K O M P A, residence. Kampa, K A M P A. Thorny bushes, gampa, G A M P A, basket, dumpa, D U M P A, tuber like potato. The other scholar get, got up and said, Yes, using these four words, I can compose a poem. What is it? I'll give the English version. This body, which is full of dust, And ailments is compa k o m p a residence. This body itself is compa k o m p a residence. Housing what? Ailments, all sorts of complaints, and dirty. Second, this body is compa k a m p a, full of thorny bushes. Which cannot cross the ocean of life, and this body is again dumpa, d-u-m-p-a. You know, all underground tubers. If you cut a piece and plant again, it can grow. Similarly, the life is repeated. The cycle of birth and death is repeated. Therefore, it is dumpa. D U M P A. This poem is composed by Bhagwan 50 years ago. This boy said it. A Swami clapped. Dumpa, kampa, <laughs> and kampa. That's what he said. Everybody liked it. Then another scholar said, quoting a poem from Bhagavata. Oh, Pandit, you say God is everywhere. This is a very famous poem known to all Telugu-speaking people. Oh scholar, you say God is everywhere. Further, you you are also rendering poems, quoting poems from Bhagavata, telling that God is in water, He is in the sky, He is in earth, that He is present in all elements, that He is present uh, in the fathomless depths of ocean. Then why have you come here? When God is everywhere, why have you come here? Then that scholar gave the answer. I have come here to worship God in human form. I have come here to touch the feet of God in human form. You understand? Why? Because the feet of God brings us awareness. The feet of God will help us to cross this ocean of life. The feet of God is is the divine will which operates within me. The feet of God is the only refuge for the entire humanity. The feet of God dispels the darkness of night. Feet of God grants me the wisdom. Therefore, I have come here. Is the answer given by that scholar? All this is uh, rendered in poetic form. And then the other man, who oh, is that? So then he praised Bhagwan Baba. Swami is a very personification of truth. Swami is a very personification of the divine melody that communicates the divine teaching. To humanity, Bhagwan Baba, feet are to be worshipped by the entire humanity if it wants to be safe and secure. That is the meaning of the poem composed by that one of the boys. 
the other boy playing the role of a scholar said ah what a poem it is this is also composed by swami and then the other boy quoted another poem composed by swami in praise of himself i praise that god my adoration to that god my worship to that god wearing ochre robes who is compassionate who is a very very manifestation of beauty whose feet are like lotus flowers who showers the rain of vibhuti who occupies the entire universe whose hair is intertwined whose hair is curly and who is totally detached whose heart is full of kindness who is the divine sculptor and who is the one of charity i adore thee my lord that is the poem composed by swami which was repeated by one of the boys it was uh, he in that poem received thunderous applause from the audience that day then another boy said these are all scholars it's an assembly of court assembly of pandits as i said in the beginning another boy in the role of another pandit he said yes yes there are no limits for swami's love swami is present everywhere would anybody tell you will anybody tell you the poem indicating this immediately one boy got up yes this what baba said you may be in the forest you may be in the sky you may be in a city or in a village you may be on the mountain top or in the deep sea but sai will never forget you that's the assurance that baba has given that poem was quoted by one of the students everybody appreciated it then another boy said anyone here who remember the poem written by baba in praise of bharat in praise of india another boy said yes yes that poem still ringing in my ears what is it this is the meaning this is the land which is reputed in all the continents of this world this is the land that has one freedom driving out the foreigners and the foreign rule this is a land of fine arts and literature this is a land of science music technology and literature and having been born in this land it is the duty of the boys to uphold the pristine glory and the prestige of this country that is the substance of this poem most of you must have heard from the divine discourses repeatedly and then another boy said we hear that swami may has taken same oath same pledge like rama and krishna anybody who remember the poem what baba said with reference to rama and krishna one boy said yes i will tell this is substance the same krishna the manifestation manifestation of bliss is here in our midst to recognize his friends the cowherd boys with whom he played as krishna they are born again and he has ease in our midst to recognize his classmates his friends of that age the same sri rama of that age he is here to find out his subjects his associates today his monkeys where are they we are all the monkeys and same vishnu with all his weapons has come down here to pick up those weapons what are the weapons of uh, insig what are the insignia what are the signs and the marks of vishnu vishnu blows kaunch that kaunch is nothing but the sound vishnu has wheel the wheel of time vishnu has mace m a c e which represents the power 
Vishnu represents, Vishnu has a flower which represents the human heart. So, he has come to pick up these things. The divine, who is the puppet player? He stands in the midst of all the living beings, enjoys the divine play. We the scholars, let us be participants in the divine play. Describe and extol and delight within ourselves watching the divine cosmic play. That's what he said. And then another boy said, there is some relationship between devotion and uh, flute, morally, and love. There is some relationship between love, devotion, and the flute. Anybody who will comment on this? One student got up and said, yes. Murali, flute, is hollow. The flute has nine holes. When it is hollow, when the flute is empty, the flute adorns the lips of the Lord, into which he, he blows the divine breath, so that we are able to hear the divine melody. Every human being must be so hollow, empty, without any pride and ego, so that he would become a flute on the lips of God, into whom he will blow his breath, such that everybody can hear the divine melody. And then love. Love is an expression of devotion. Love for God is devotion. This has got nothing to do with education, scholarship, or position, or status. Gopikas of those days, in Krishna Avatar, they were all illiterate, but they had intense love for God. Then immediately another boy got up. Yes, yes, how true you are. Education is an obstacle for realization. Educated people fight among themselves. Educated people argue among themselves. Educated people want to know God through their intellect and logic. Intellect and logic will never help you to know God. Arguments will land you nowhere. An educated man knows everything excepting his own self. An educated man is not able to give up his meanness, he has no total knowledge, not any total awareness. Therefore, education has got nothing to do with the devotion and awareness. Then another boy said, so what shall we do now? All these things I said are said in a poem written by Baba himself. This is, this is uh, an enactment uh, by boys where everyone played the role of a scholar quoting from Swami's literature you could understand now and so what shall we do? another boy got upset we don't need to do anything now we only need to do one thing which is also said again in the form of a poem composed by Baba we need to do only one thing what is it? Oh God, that heart which you have gifted me, I shall surrender to you. I shall offer it to you back. This heart is not my property. The love in my heart is not my property. It is you who have gifted it to me. So I offer it unto you, O oh Lord, once again. That's all. Or else, what else I have in this world worthy enough to offer it to you, my God? With that, the whole program ended. All scholars clapped for the wonderful offering that one has to make to God. The best of the offerings is one's own human heart with pure love. That was the conclusion that day. This 
is a program 6th of march 2004 i just started writing articles for sanasari for information this is all black and white recorded it's not my concoction or imagination everything because i take notes there and do it because i may be see anil kumar broadcasting corporation that's what yes that's what i do you know huh? 6th of march 2004 let me tell you we the we this group is really fortunate in one sense that we have all the information beforehand the telugu readers and others may get this information after 6 months or 4 months because sanasar we will not print more than 3 pages at a time no. more than at a time so it may take couple of months for them to come to know those who are not here speaking other language other than telugu will not come to know at all because who will do this for them i am writing in telugu as you can understand <laughs> so this group is really fortunate that they could know what all that is happening beforehand just as all films are shown a preview to the journalists to make a comment so you are all the journalists to whom these things are shared with it's my pleasure after all god given opportunity i am not in airs no it's all god given opportunity that's all it's all swami's uh, that's all nothing to, with no personal element here yes now it is a competition among the colors each color saying that i am superior to other color four boys representing four colors started arguing among themselves swami laughed and laughed i tell you very nice the first fellow representing the blue color he said i am the blue color you fellows know that blue is the best of all the colors other fellows asked why why the fellow said yes blue is the best topmost why krishna as is in blue color ramachandra as blue complexion sky is blue sea is blue therefore blue is the best and then other boy representing red color he said stop nonsense blue color no i the red is the best of all you know that why other boys are why rama may be blue in complexion krishna may be blue in complexion what is the red robe that baba wears is red in color therefore i am the best not only that fire is red in color you know that or rose is red in color red is top most without red color there cannot be any creation at all understand i am top most the third fellow said i am the black color i command all of you to shut your mouth i don't know why what nonsense you are speaking one says that rama krishna are blue sky is blue and you say that uh, red, the red robe of baba is red color fire is red you are next stop it black is top most black is the best you know why the hair of baba is black in color the hair of baba is black in color the mole on his cheek is black in color are you fellows don't you have the common sense the teacher who teaches you in the classroom writes on a blackboard with a blackboard what is it you learn so blackboard is stupid the hair of baba is black so what more you want so black color is the top most that's what he said and then amur boy said i'm just understanding how foolish you are 
how ignorant you are i am just following you but there is a, some limit for your talk please stop it i am the white color i am top most white is always bright white stands for purity that's why swami insisted that everyone should wear white dress don't you know that jasmine flowers are white sun is white sunlight is white moon light moon light is bright and white white is the best color you understand and then all the four fellows came blue red black white the four represented should all right there's no use in fighting among ourselves oh boys who are in front of us let one of you get up and give your judgment we'll follow your verdict because you are neutral we have identified ourselves with each of the colors since you are detached you can give your verdict one boy got up slowly and he started speaking like this swami may be wearing red robe he may be blue in complex he may have black hair and a black mole he may ask us to wear the white dress even but all colors are same to him because on the top black on the skin blue on the cheek black robe being red so all colors are in him he is in all the colors so there is nothing like difference one color being superior to other color all are same to him but you people understand there is only one color that baba stands for what is that color the color of love love is the color which is topmost which is superior there is no other thing compared to that that's what it is uh, said by that boy on 6th of march the students of uh, higher secondary school presented a program on 5th of march 2004 this is really a novel idea in boys a very novel idea all of us liked it more so bhagwan because his keenness how he was watching i always tell boys when you do any program please keep in you swami also how if he smiles go ahead if you serious well you be serious in your acting now understand that you have not been able to make it impressive you should watch him constantly so this swami liked it very much why the idea concept itself is great this is an episode relating to swami's childhoods childhood days bhagwan had few teachers teachers swami studied at three places for your information uravakanda kamalapuram bukkapatnam these are three places where he studied and few teachers names are very well remembered and swami repeatedly refers to them one is mehboob khan the other one is kondappa third one subbanna tamiraju manchiraju these are the teachers about whom swami always uh, speaks very high of them the boys conceived the idea like this all the teachers who are in heaven now they have come down to earth they were in search of such sai baba where he is and they they lived here about uh, 80 years ago i mean sorry about 70 years ago you were so like when swami was 6 year old or 5 10 year old and that puttaparthi is quite different from puttaparthi of today so all the four teachers descending from heaven they lost their way 
they couldn't know where to go what is this is this putabarti at all where is such sai baba that's why it was quite interesting for everybody to watch first teacher to come over there was mahbub khan mahbub khan has a very close relationship with swami intimate relationship who has realized the divinity of baba who is to call him aside and give him some pakoda south indian dish come and eat it it is specially prepared for you and swami said please don't serve me like that there are other classmates also they will feel so bad if i only eat like that sir don't do that there is another episode relating mahbub khan this i am giving you brief history so that you can enjoy this uh, some details of the past it seems one teacher asked baba to stand up on the bench get up stand up on the bench so ami was standing there on the bench as per the command of the teacher and the teacher finished the teaching he was about to get up he could not get up because he got fixed to the chair his chair also was getting up yeah. and then it mahbub gone came there and said oh sir i know your problem you ask satya to sit down then you will be released from chair so this is an episode connected with the the teacher mahbub khan who loved baba and he knew his divinity from the beginning so mahbub khan came there he went on shouting satya satya where are you somebody said that you are here in this place and he started asking boys oh little ones have you seen satya here oh my colleague kondappa oh you are also here very good i find you searching for someone kondappa the other teacher of sat sai baba oh mahbubar you are here good i also came here searching for satya oh both of us are from heaven very good where is where is satya he to went on searching and the kondappa the other teacher said mahbub khan you know why i left heaven it is boring <laughs> tiresome disgusting i am not interested any longer therefore i chose to come down here in search of satya let both of us search for him and then at that moment this another teacher manchirazu manchirazu and he said what wonderful days we had in those times with satya well how can we continue there let us spend some time now so i have excused myself i have taken permission from indra to come back to earth to spend some time with satya very see very see and then kondappa another teacher said look here manchirazu look here mahbub khan don't you remember in those days how satya used to do prayer every day in our school he used to sing that song don't you remember how nicely he used to do i recall those days really great let us spend some time with satya very see now boys they started singing aha raha tava ahwana pracharita that song written by baba which he sang every day in the school prayer everybody joined singing that song swami was literally touched i tell you i saw his eyes being wet because he has gone back to 70 years back and the song that he has composed boy is singing you can imagine how sweet it would be how nice it must have been and then subbanna another teacher came and said oh manjirazu kondappa mahbub khan i find all of you here what are you doing my boys here what are you doing and then all the three replied we are searching for sir for satya we want to meet him again so we left the heaven we are finding out where he is oh i see yes did i not tell you did i not tell you long back 
that satya is not an ordinary boy that is divine child that he will be known as god on earth some day did i not tell you you have not believed me today you are missing him there so you have come back all right doesn't matter better late than never let us be in search of him let us find him somewhere there and then tamiraju also happened to be there all right when all the fellows are here why not i come down therefore i too chose to come here let us all search together satya where he is tamiraju the teacher started rec- recollecting his good old days how such a influence our lives do you remember my friends i tell you i had an eye problem and baba cured my eye as a child i tell you because i could not afford operation in those days and he cured my eye problem saved my na- saved my sight and not only that he helped my watchman also my servant made with money how helpful satya was we remember we remember those days and then all of them started singing that song kapadu sai deva kapadu protect sai deva oh sai protect all of us they started singing sami was very 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 happy and then came another one another scene Salam alaikum salam alaikum is the kind of greeting of muslims mahbub khan said salam alaikum i do salam salutations to everybody could you find satya where he is well he started looking at the boys who were seated there where is satya among you is there satya among you because you all seem to be quite young and then mahbub khan says now yes we will tell you where satya is i will tell you next time huh? because i have to go home and get up